Dunstan for Celtic. That's a fine pass to Barnes. A great chance for Celtic for the third. Brilliantly finished. And that was hard. Very, very hard. Yeah. Because you know, you're into the unknown then. I'd been there since I was basically 15 years old. And this is me, a man at, at 33, leaving. Uh, so really lots of different uh, fears and we anxieties and things like that, what you're going to do, how's it going to be, and you're going to the second division to play and all these different things. But uh, I turned it all around and tried to be as positive as I could and, and try to go and do everything I possibly could for Coman, like the same way I'd, I'd try to do everything I could as, as a player for Celtic and just take that professionalism and effort and put it into playing for Coman. That professionalism was noted, for after being appointed manager at Kilmarnock, he returned to his beloved Celtic in 1994. The supporters were keen to discover if Tommy had enough experience to lead a club as large as Celtic. His first Old Firm match in charge answered their question. Walker causing problems also for Presley. McGinley back towards McStay. The brilliant save by Gorham. Collins takes it. He scores! Good play again. Grant checks inside McCall. On for McStay. It's a second for Celtic. Tommy's style of management brought flowing, entertaining football back to Celtic Park, giving the support new hope for their first piece of silverware in many years. Good off by Collins to Nicholas. Good play. Peter Grant gets a touch as Collins. It's a magnificent goal. Person, first touch letting him down now, McStay pounds. Plays it through now into an area for O'Donnell to attack the ball. Good play by McStay. O'Donnell hits early cross. It's Faulkner who's in there now. That's a tremendous strike. This is Collins. It's Tosh McKinley. Good ball through. The opening's on for John Collins. Great play by Collins. That style of play took Celtic to the semi-final of the Scottish Cup. The Parkhead men had drawn with Hibs in the first match. In the replay, there would be no mistakes. Brilliant play from Celtic. Three. Mellon, a little bit of trouble there. Out it comes to Collins. Delightful finish from Collins. Measured into the corner. Chance on over the header, that'll settle it! Come on, go on all for Celtic! The final was crucial for many reasons. Tommy Burns had to prove he could win a trophy in his first season. The fans had not seen a cup victory for six years. Stalwart players like Captain Paul McStay, Pat Bonner and Peter Grant were determined not to let their team and their manager down. Sends over a good cross, that's awkward. Jimmy Boyle scambles the ball away, but only as far as McKinley. That's for Van Hoydonk. Great header! And Celtic are ahead! Pierre Van Hoydonk scores his eighth goal in Celtic colours and sets the cup final alight. Jack with Volta. Was McIntyre, the final whistle goes! Celtic have won the tenth Scottish Cup! Big, big pressure that day. Especially against Airdrie, who were murder to play against because they, they work really hard and man marked all over the pitch. And, and we hung on really then, to be fair to the boys and to be fair to the lads, I mean, they were under real pressure, we all were. But they hung on, they battled their corner, didn't they play particularly well. But uh, eventually getting the, the trophy, and that was really the the main thing that was it, just to win the cup that day. We gave a bit of sense of relief about the club. We could start to, to build again. I remember driving through the, the gobbles and the team bus, and having seen that before in old Celtic films, the old Celtic teams coming down through the, to Hamden, 
and uh, then back up the gal through the gallery gate, which is where I came from, through the pubs and uh, I'm going to say pubs and clubs. There, I don't know any clubs there. <laughs> or certainly know any you want to be getting into. But uh, through all the pubs and, and, and the gallery gate, and, and that was for me was something that I felt really proud about the fact that I came from the gallery gate and then I was driving through there. I wasn't driving through. I had my license at that time, enough, but uh, <laughs> I was being driven through there as a manager of the Celtic, with all the Celtic players in the cup and everything, and it was it was fabulous. It really was wonderful. However, despite that success, the stigma of Rangers winning nine in a row was too great for the board at Celtic. Tommy resigned in 1997. Everybody was too wrapped up in it, and it all centred on this nine in a row thing, which was absolutely crazy, because it happened, and so what? So what? It just passes. And you go on and you build again, and you start again. And we would have changed a lot of different things had we stayed there. They brought in, funnily enough, they brought in some of the players they did bring it, and took it on. And we would have learned from all that, because that was three years of fantastic experience, just binned and discarded, and it, it could have been so much better. But that was, that was a choice and uh, you have to live with that in football and, and go forward. Living through it all, I've learned a great deal for that and hopefully I've learned from that experience and not get involved in things like that, be able to step back and be calmer and look at things pragmatically, you know, as opposed to in your face and we need to do this, we need to do that, you better this or whatever. Um, and even the people above me, I would manage people above me a lot more differently now. Tommy's pride and passion for the club he loves has never diminished, from the time he signed as a schoolboy to the present day. What does it mean? Probably everything. Everything, because I think that when you're young, you have your, your dreams about what you think you, you want to be, and I think to suddenly get those dreams given to you and to live through them for a long time and to have it all come true is it's a fantastic uh, feeling to, to know that you've, you've realised your dream and that's something I'll always, always be grateful to God for because of God, I pestered him night after night just to, to be a Celtic player and the fact that I stayed there so long and was fortunate enough to win so many things and play with so many great players and so many great people there. Like Jimmy Steele, Frank Connor, Billy McNeil, David Hay, Sean Fallon, Jock Steen. Fantastic people. And um, just an absolute pleasure. It really was. It was, it was. it was a dream come true. It really was. Fantastic.